Nebraska drew Texas A&M in the 8-9 matchup of the South region. Let's dive into the Texas A&M scouting report, including five things you need to know, a film breakdown, and an overview of their roster. So getting into the five things that you need to know, number one is they are the best offensive rebounding team in the country, and it really isn't close. They have a 42.0 offensive rebounder percentage, and so we'll show how they kind of get that a little bit in film, but what that means is 42% of their misses, they are the ones that get the offensive rebound. That is just a wild number and a very, very important thing that they run. Thing number two is they are 351st in defensive three-point attempt rate, meaning only 11 teams in the country allow more threes to be tempted. Now, when we look at what Nebraska wants to do, they are a team that wants to take a ton of threes. So this kind of fits into what Nebraska wants to do. Thing number three is Texas A&M runs a no middle type defense, which is similar to Nebraska. So they switch a lot off ball. They force a lot to the sideline. They force a lot to the baseline. Well, again, we'll go over this one specifically in film in just a moment, but um, it just is something that is worth knowing. Thing number four is Texas A&M is the 31st ranked offense in the country per Ken Palm. Usually this means that you are in some capacity a good shooting team, but they are 353rd in three-point percentage and 301st in two-point percentage. That's out of like 362 teams. So they are good by creating extra possessions. They are elite on the offensive glass. They don't turn the ball over and they get to the free throw line. And that's where they have a good ranked offense. Before we get to thing number five, if you are enjoying, please like and subscribe. I'm going to have a ton of content out throughout March Madness. So thing number five, Wade Taylor may have the biggest green light in America. And that's saying something because Casey Tominaga is in this game. Wade Taylor for Texas A&M will put up a ton of shots. We'll talk about him a little bit more in the roster overview, but he's going to put up anything and everything that he sees. Okay, so now we're going to get into some of the film. We're going to go through two offensive plays and two defensive plays for Texas A&M. This first one, we're going to start right here. Um, with Obaseki just going for a drop on a drive, and that's what he likes to do. He likes in Texas AM in general, wants to try to get to the rim. The shot is going to be missed. But what I want to point out is because I've I've harped on it a little bit already, is Texas AM is the best offensive rebounding team in the country. Number eleven right here, Anderson Garcia, he is one of the best individual offensive rebounders in the country. And what they do is so as I rewind a little bit, notice him, he's kind of in this is called the dunker spot right here, kind of just chilling. It's anywhere in this kind of area where um, not in the paint. And I know he has one foot in the paint right here, but usually it's like one foot in the paint or right outside the paint, just kind of waiting. Sometimes he'll get lobs or whatever like that. But what they do is he's just going to sneak in kind of underneath defenders. And so now as the shot goes up, he's the one essentially boxing out the defense. Like he's going to, even though he starts underneath the backboard, he's going to push his defender out. And now look, he's the one that has all of the positioning. And then you're also going to see Texas A&M crashes with multiple guys in general as well. And so now they're just in a great spot to actually be able to corral the ball. Now this one, yes, he doesn't like grab it with two hands, but him and, and number zero right here diving in, that's what keeps this ball alive. And so now as it goes out, this is also a very common thing. If Wade Taylor's open, I don't care how deep he is, he's going to fire it up and, and he will make some of them. This is kind of an action that I've seen Texas A&M run a good amount in the, some few games that I saw. And it's very, very simple. So it's just going to be a staggered pin down. And all this is, is there's going to be one guy setting a pin down and then a second guy as well. Sometimes Texas A&M will have somebody go first through it and then have Taylor come in second. This time it's just Taylor coming in first. And then once he gets the ball, you're going to see his defender get caught on the screen and, and Taylor's just pretty much going to be able to go to work. Sometimes he'll catch it and drive and try to get all the way to the rim. Sometimes he'll catch and shoot. Sometimes it's a pull up right here. He reads the defense, realizes as he catches it, he has a ton of space, and so now he's just going to get up the shot. Um, also, even though he makes it, want to just point out, like, look at this positioning on this offensive rebound. If it was a miss that kind of lands anywhere in this area, Garcia is probably the guy that gets it. So as we flip to the defensive side now, we're going to go through two plays that just kind of show what Texas A&M tries to do. So you're going to see ball screen. This is just going to be a switch, and they are going to switch a lot. That is going to be a theme in, in this clip and what they want to do. So there's denying the ball screen here. Um, Texas A&M doesn't force like an insane amount of turnovers in general, but the turnovers that they do force, they force a lot of live ball turnovers. A lot of that is by like Wade Taylor, the fourth, shooting the gap or, or just kind of having defenders try to do that. So shoot the gap, nothing there. And now kind of flow into this post up, handoff. Again, this is now going to be a switch, keeping everything in front. And then you can also see like here, um, just pointing out like, hey, we're, you know, there's somebody up top, we need to switch. So on this drive... Texas A&M is going to um, have a lot of help. Like, this is similar concepts to what Nebraska runs defensively to. Right? A lot of help in the paint near the rim. So now as the ball gets swung, everybody rotates that back out. And once again, now there's going to be 
Um, Texas and Ammon's trying to ice, so they're trying to force sideline, baseline, and, and knowing that they're going to have a defender there. Doesn't do a great job there. Ball swung. And now it's here, right? It's it's this um, right here, number zero. He was, that's Jace Carter. He was helping at the rim. Now he's defending the big, setting the screen. And so now this is just going to be another switch. And you're going to see 23 dive. This just, uh, I know it was a lot of just switches and little actions, but it just wanted to show how much they'll switch, how much they'll help. Um, and at the end of the day, now they're going to force a pretty contested shot. And even right here, the very last second, the drive happens, he gets handed off, and somebody else is actually the one that contests. Now, I've mentioned how Texas A&M gives up a lot of three-pointers, and we're going to go through kind of why that is right here. So it's Kentucky, ball at the top. They're going to eventually um, come and get a ball screen up at the top. Texas A&M, they're going to basically ice everything, and so they're going to force the ball handler to have to go to kind of the strong side sideline, knowing that that's where the help's going to be. Nothing too un unusual there. Um, but what I want to point out is just look at it where what they do elsewhere defensively. So they're going to provide a ton of rim help from this weak side from the low man. Um, he's going to tag the roll, also just help at the rim. And then the other weak side defender, he's usually going to drop in a bit. Now, in this specific case, he gambles for the steal, which kind of almost uh, magnifies that, like, hey, this, this kick out three is going to be open. But even in general, even if he doesn't try to gamble for the steal, generally this guy is also going to kind of dive into the paints and then have to rotate to where out is, wherever he's needed. Now, I mean, look at this right here. All five Texas A&M A &M defenders are below, like, this SEC logo right before below the free throw line. I mean, they're they're all right in here. So now as the kickout happens, that's just what Texas a and is going to do. They're going to sell out, um, protecting the rim, and then they're going to do a pretty good job still closing out. It's not like they give up a ton of three-point attempts, but they're still about average in terms of three-point percentage. It's not like teams are shooting an insanely good amount or an insanely good percent against them from three. It's just... They shoot a ton of them. So this one they do make. Just wanted to show how they you can get the kickouts. Let's get into the roster overview. So number four, Wade Taylor. We've talked about him a little bit so far. He's a six-foot guard, and he has arguably the biggest green light in America. He's put up 266 twos and 279 threes this season. He isn't super efficient, but he also takes a very high degree of difficulty types of shots. He'll pull from legit anywhere, but can also attack downhill, and he's just going to have the ball in his hands a ton. And he will obviously create a lot for himself, as I've just talked about with the shots, but he will also create for others, and he leads the team in assists. In addition to that, he's also a pretty good on-ball defender and, and is able to force a lot of steals. Number 23, Tyrese Radford, is a 6'2 guard that is another high-volume guard. He's averaged 16 points a game, but again, not crazy efficient. He's been best in the mid-range, but is another guard kind of like Taylor that will take a lot of threes and try to get to the rim a ton. He's the secondary ball handler and can run the offense when Taylor isn't on the floor. Number 11, Anderson Garcia is a six foot seven forward. He isn't a huge offensive threat in terms of Texas A&M running stuff for him, um, but he can knock down a three or convert near the rim. And But he's on the floor for different things. He's on the floor because of what he can do defensively. In A&M's heavy switching defense, they, he is someone that can both protect the rim and also guard on the perimeter. And he's also one of the best offensive rebounders in the entire country. Number zero, Jace Carter is a six foot five wing, and he has not been efficient shooting the ball, but he's taken the third most threes per game on the team. He's a rotation player that brings some decent size on defense, but is also not someone that they are necessarily going to fully rely on on either end of the floor. He's more of a guy that just is in the rotation. He goes in, does what he needs to. Number 13, Solomon Washington is a six foot seven four that at times will even play the five. He is a very good rim protector and just defender in general. Now on offense, he is not a perimeter threat at all, but he will convert a high percentage near the rim. And he's another guy that's just, he is very, very active on the offensive glass. Number 15, Henry Coleman is a six foot eight big that is more of your prototypical big and that he's going to mainly shoot near the rim and in the paint. He will guard bigs, but is not a big shot blocker at all. And at times he can switch out onto the perimeter if needed. And once again, a very good offensive rebounder. That's a theme for a lot of these bigs. Number 35, Manny Obaseki is a six foot four guard that has really come on strong as of late. He started playing a ton more minutes the past six games as AM has been five and one in that stretch. Obaseki has shown that he can be a solid shooter, but he really wants to get downhill more than anything else on offense. And he's shown as of late he can really be that tertiary guard alongside Taylor and Rafford and give them a really good trio. Number two, Hayden Hefner is a six foot six wing. He's mainly going to shoot from the perimeter, but hasn't shot the ball well, and a lot of his minutes recently have been taken by Obaseki. Lastly, number 10, Wildens Levesque is a 6'11 big that starts pretty much every game but only plays around 10 minutes a game. He's a very, very good rim protector and a very, very good offensive rebounder. When he is in, those are the two things that he is going to do.
So this is a very interesting matchup given the two styles of play. Texas A&M wants to give up three-point attempts, and Nebraska wants to take as many as possible. Both teams have a guy in Tomonaga and Taylor that are capable of going off for 30 in a moment's notice. Rebounding is probably going to be the biggest thing in this game, though, as that is one area Nebraska has really struggled this season. If you enjoyed, please like and subscribe and click here to see the Florida Atlantic Scouting Report against Northwestern.